Hey everyone, this is MikeBen96 on behalf of Wohotech.com. Today we're going to take a look at the calendars application for iPhone, iPod Touch, and iPad. It is available from the Apple App Store for $6.99. This application is supposed to be an alternative to the calendar app that comes with all iOS devices. So this is going to be my review and overview of calendars. So we'll just go ahead and open it up. You are immediately greeted with the month view of the app. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is we're going to take a look at the, the user interface. We're just going to go around with all the buttons and stuff like that. See what we have here. So here we have our calendar button. Our calendar button lets us choose which calendars uh, we want to display. So this app will link to your Google account and will pull data from your Google Calendar. So the cool thing about this app is it has a lot of support for all the features in Google Calendar. So it could pull all of those different calendars that you have in your Google account. So you can see I have my main one here, which is my email address, and then I have a holidays calendar. So you can also delete different calendars, you can add a different, a different calendar, you can also choose which calendars sync and which calendars do not sync. So I have both of mine syncing right now. Okay, so that is the calendars button. And up here we could change the view of the application. So we could list view, day view, week view, and month view. Here we have our add event button. Self-explanatory. And then, of course, here in the middle, we have our calendar. Down here, we have settings. We're going to take a look at uh, the settings menu in just a moment. Down here, we have our uh, time or date, whatever you want to call it. A little bar where you can change uh, which date or month appears. So it, dis it disappears when you're in list view. But when you're in day view, you can choose which day. When you're in week view, you change which week. And in month view, you change the month. All right, and then down here, we, s we switch to Google Tasks. So the Calendars app also supports Google Tasks. Uh, it has full support for Google Tasks. So if we click this up here, uh, we could change which task list appears. We could also add a task list by clicking this button here. And then we could also change how the tasks are sorted. So here's my task to review the calendars app, which I'm doing right now. So if we tap this button again, we go back to calendar view. Alright, so we're going to take a look at the settings menu. So our first option, we can uh, choose to sync manually. So like I said, it'll sync uh, with your Google Calendar account. So that's a manual sync there. Default calendar, we'll choose which calendar you want to be the default. I only have one main calendar. Um, other calendars, like holidays, will not appear here. But if you have more than one calendar, you can choose which one is the default. Uh, and the default calendar is used when creating events. Uh, here you can change uh, which account you want to use. There's also some other options for your different views. Uh, you can edit your alarms, time zone support, uh, tasks, and uh, if you want to use your local calendar, which is stored on the device. Okay, so uh, we're going to go through some of the things that this app can do. So like I said, this app works very well uh, with Google Calendar. So if you use Google Calendar as your main calendar, maybe, uh, it pulls a lot of data from Google Calendar. Uh, some other calendar apps do not support Google Calendar as well as this app. For example, some, some calendar apps that say they support Google Calendar may not be able to support multiple calendars within the Google Calendar. It will only use your default calendar. Um, and it also supports tasks, which is very nice, and those tasks will also sync with your Google account. Another thing I really like about this app is the week view. You don't see week view too often uh, in calendar apps. And so this is a really nice week view. So it's just like a five-day view. I really like it because you know, when I have a lot of stuff going on, so uh, when I try to focus on one week at a time. So I just like to take a look at the week view every so often and see what's coming up. 
Alright, so another cool thing I like is the landscape orientation. So you can change the orientation to landscape, and that works within all of the views of this application. You can also zoom in and out of the month view and drag around, which is a very nice feature if you have a lot of events going on in one day, and they may not all fit inside that little box. So then you can zoom in to fit more events in the box. And that zoom also works in portrait orientation. And uh, speaking of events fitting in the box, something that I really like about this application is that it will show all of your events on the month view. Meaning that if I go over here to the calendars app that comes with the device, that in order to see an event, or which events are on a certain day, you have to click on the day, which uh, could be a little annoying if you were trying to find a certain event. So uh, this uh, this calendar view kind of changes that all and shows you all of your events uh, yeah, in one view without having to like, tap on a certain day in order to see which events are going on. So it gives you a nice little overview. Um, but there are a few things I would like to change. For example, in the month view, you can drag and drop an event. So if you could kind of see that, there's an event that's currently dragging on my finger. Well, I find it t a little too easy to drag and drop events. Uh, sometimes, like, when I'm tapping on something, but I accidentally move my finger while, like, it's being tapped, uh, it'll start dragging, and then I'm like, oh no, where did this come from? Where do I put it? And I don't remember where it was, so I just let my finger go. Uh, but they do tell you that an event was updated, but if you didn't catch that, then you wouldn't really know. But they do give you a chance to undo that change. Which is nice, but again, if you weren't really paying attention after you let it go and you didn't see that, uh, then you're kind of in trouble if you don't remember uh, what day that certain event was on. So another thing I like about this application is that it supports privacy functions. So if you had a shared calendar, if for example, if you had a Google Calendar that you're sharing with someone else, a uh, Google Calendar supports that function, but this application uh, includes privacy functions. So when you make an event, you can choose for the default, which will use the default settings that are set in your Google account. Public, whoops, public will make that event available to anyone who has access to the calendar to see. But another option I really like is private. So if you had a shared calendar and you wanted to add an event to it, but you only ah. Uh, well, you only wanted yourself to see that event. You didn't want anyone else to see the event. You can use private, which is a very nice feature that this app supports. A lot of apps do not have that much functionality with Google Calendar. And so it's kind of nice um, that this app supports uh, those kind of things that Google Calendar brings. And another thing I'd like to change um, is there's no Today button, which is kind of nice in the Apple version of calendars. If you were, like, let's go to, let's go to some future day. So, I'm here in December 2011. And instead of tapping this arrow a million times in order to get back to today, I just tap this today button to jump back to February. Well, the Calendars app does not have a Today button, which I think is a great disadvantage. Um, you can use this down here to change. Say you're in some future year. Well, in order to get back to today, you're going to have to swipe all the way back to February 2011. So I find that to be a, a great disadvantage because I do use the Today button a lot. Uh, it, it depends on what whether you use that button a lot. Like, if you go to future weeks or months, uh, for example, if you go to those future dates a lot, then today button is probably a nice button for you. And this app does not have a today button, which could be a little bit of a nuisance. Alright, and another thing I found that I really don't like is 
That's this arrow here. This arrow to go to the next month. It's a little too close to the add event button. And that could also become a little confusing. Or not confusing, but annoying. Uh, because you want to go to the next a month. And you accidentally tap the plus button to add a new event. That kind of gets a little annoying, so maybe they can maybe revamp that a little to maybe like put your arrows down here on the bottom. I don't know. But I, I find myself a lot of times accidentally clicking on that plus button. Alright, so uh, I think that is basically it. That is the calendars app. So uh, it, it has a lot of good features in it. For example, this month view, I, I absolutely love. Um, how you can see all your events without having to tap on a month in order to see the events like other calendar apps. So this app has some pros but I think it has more cons than pros. I personally uh, do not like this app as much as the Apple version of the calendar app. So it just depends on what you want in a calendars app. If you think this calendars app is good for you, if you like to use the full functionality of Google Calendar, and if you like this month view, if you like the week view, um, I didn't really go over the views too much, but you have a list view where it will show you all your events in a list. You can even search for events. You got your day view sorted by time. Um, but also, the regular calendar app has list view where you can search for your events. You got your list there, your day view, and your month view. So are you really gaining anything? Well, I don't think you really are. Um, my final conclusion of this app, I think it's a little pricey. Uh, saying that the regular calendar app that comes with all uh, devices is free. You don't have to pay for it other than paying for the device. And it has most of these features already. And again, it does, su it does support Google Calendar um, because you can just go to your settings menu and add a calendar uh, through your Google account. So. The free calendar app does support Google Calendar, so it isn't like you're gaining anything paying $6.99 for this app to get Google Calendar. Uh, pretty much the only different things are the week view. Um, the calendar app that comes with the device does not have week view. And also the month view, all of your events show up here. Other than that, there's not really anything new in this application. So, like there are alerts still, but the iPhone version, or the regular version that comes with the device, has alerts as well. So are you really gaining anything with this app? Not really. Um, so here, here's my conclusion. This app is too pricey. If you really want to pay $6.99 to get two or three new features, then go ahead and do so. But I personally think this app is too pricey, and I really think Riedel either needs to add a lot more new features to this application uh, and fix some of those few uh, annoyance things that I found uh, or lower the price of the application because it is pretty pricey to begin with $6.99 for a calendar application that only has a couple more features than the free versions of most calendar applications so that is the calendars application by Riedel if you have any questions email me at mikebed96 at wohotech.com so this is mikebed96 signing out